once you were outside, uh, did you become aware uh, that uh, there was an individual that uh, may need some uh, a medical attention because there was something in his eye? Yes. All right. When you received that information, what did you do? Uh, I was having a small talk, as I said, with my captain and battalion chief, and a law enforcement officer came over and said something to the effect of, hey, the, the shooter or the suspect thinks he has something in his eye. Can you go check him out? So I said, sure. All right. What did you do? I walked over to our engine, engine 16, and grabbed our medical jump bag and proceeded to go over to the squad car where Mr. Reeves was being detained. Um, right. There was an officer. Let me ask you some mm -hmm. questions. When you got there, uh, was uh, Mr. Reeves inside the uh, Mark Cruiser? Yes. And was there a deputy with him? Yes. And did the deputy assist Mr. Reeves in getting out of the cruiser? Yes. Uh, when he got out of the cruiser, did you notice whether or not Mr. Reeves was handcuffed? He was. When someone indicates they might have something in their eye, what is the first <clears throat> procedure that you would do? We'll talk about what you did, but just typically if someone says, I think I got something in my eye, what do you do? Uh, first, I personally removed his glasses, put them on the trunk of the car. All right. Um, I observed his eye. I didn't see any, any redness. I didn't see any foreign objects. I didn't see um, any lacerations or abrasions, anything like that. The sclera, the white part of his eye, was white. During the course of the interview, are you able to, to look to your left, look to your right, or even scoot over uh, to make uh, observations of Mr. Reeves? I, I was more leaned over most of the other interviews so I could observe that. And during the time that you were uh, in the uh, vehicle during the interview, during that entire process, uh, did you have an occasion at least once, if not multiple times, to see Mr. Reed's face? Yes, sir. Uh, again, the same question. Were you able to see the left side of his face, uh, head, like the temple area? Yes, sir. How about the right side temple area, ear? He moved around a bit, so I, at times I would see the right side as well. And, of course, I guess you're behind him. You can see the back of his head. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, during the interview, uh, being in the proximity that you just described, uh, at any time based on your life experience did you observe uh, any type of injuries to Mr. Reeves' uh, face, left side, right side, back of his head, uh, that uh, would give you concern that maybe he needed medical treatment? I did not. I, did, I didn't notice any injuries at first. You remember me taking a depot of you on July the 27th of 2015? Yes, sir. You remember uh, that when I took your depot, you were placed under oath? Yes, sir. And to swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, sir. And were you telling the truth when, you, uh, when I was deposing you on that date? Yes, sir. And do you remember the following questions and answer? Question, okay. He's rubbing the corner of his eye. Answer, correct. Question, not his eyelid. Answer, correct. Now, were you telling the truth back when I took that question and answer from you? I was. And I would imagine that in 2015, your recollection of what happened on January the 13th of 2014 would have been much better. Maybe I misspoke back then on the depot. You think you miss, so you think your recollection today in 2022 is better than your recollection was in 2015. Should be the same. 
When I teach trial advocacy, I always say just because you can impeach a witness doesn't mean that you should. We saw some of this yesterday. I was commenting about it on the show. And again, we saw some of the same today. Really aggressive cross and impeachment on facts that arguably aren't that significant. Uh, let me bring in my guest to talk more about this with me, former police officer Rob Joseph. He also has experience on movie sets, doing technical uh, direction and other sorts of things. And uh, he works as a private investigator as well in Salt Lake City, Utah. Rob, good to have you here. Uh, tell Thank me, you. in your experience, when you have an attorney, and I got a question about this this morning on Twitter from a Jonathan Roberts. So Jonathan, thank you for this. I wanted to answer this on the air. He said, good morning. Why do you think it was a bad tactic for the defense uh, to go so hard on the state's witnesses? Um, please explain why you think that the jury could hold it against Mr. Reeves. And um, I wanted to ask you for your experiences, Rob, have you ever seen it where a, an attorney goes unnecessarily hard on a witness who isn't combative, who's pretty agreeable and mild-mannered, and then the jury dislikes that lawyer because of it. Yeah, it's, um, I'm kind of surprised looking at looking at that, uh, how the uh, attorney went after the witness. Uh, and as you said, it was such an insignificant thing. Uh, you know, obviously, it's one of their little uh, defense tactics that he had an injury. His his vision might have been obs obscured or obstructed, uh, and it, obviously, it's one of the stages of defense. But um, with a attorney, trial attorney going after the defense attorney going after a witness on such an insignificant thing, trying to impeach his testimony, uh, basically make him a liar in front of the court. Uh, would definitely alienate the jury when they're they're kind of looking at how they're desperately going after um, witnesses to make a defense for their client. It, it doesn't it doesn't fare well with juries. I've seen it in the courtroom. It turns everybody off, including the judge. That's a good point too. Rob, you're right. Um, if this were a bench trial, especially, uh, that might uh, be a turn up for uh, her honor even more so than it is here in front of the jurors who are going to be the finders of fact, as you know. And I, I always say when I teach cross-examination to lawyers, I always say you kind of have to think of it like a mirroring sort of effect. If somebody's combative and they are just a nasty witness, by all means, go at them as hard as you want because the jury isn't going to like their bad attitude and they're going to um, see that you're evenly matching what they're doing. But yesterday I used the analogy of, of a barracuda and a goldfish with counsel in the witness because we had this very mild-mannered witness who was really agreeable, wasn't hurting the defense case, and the, the defense counsel like wanted to destroy him. And and I just kept thinking, boy, this is so disproportionate. And if it's jumping out at me, I feel like it's probably jumping out at the jury as well.